Well, what do you do on your day off, or your afternoon off? Go to the Broom Rodeo. Go to the Broom Rodeo. <laughs> Let's go have a Let's look. Let's get some Aussie culture. something a bit different in this episode so instead of riding motorcycles we took a week off in Broome and we did all sorts of bits and pieces so this is our epilogue and what we did after we'd spent four weeks riding across Australia well first up at the rodeo when it's late afternoon are the kids so the kids get to have a go on the calves and see if they can stay on before they get booked off uh, the standard clothing appears to be jeans and a long sleeve shirt and a hat, but that's okay, we went as tourists. There was food, there was ice cream, there was the beer tent. So we just had a couple of beers and we watched the kids do their thing. Just the thigh between the emu export and the forex. Hang on, let's have a take. <laughs> which one? Uh, you tell me which one you like. Cheers. 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 That's pretty rough. That's pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> Much and that tastes of nothing. <laughs> well, after the kids had had their goes on the calves, most of them getting booked off in one or two seconds, it was time for the kids to do the barrel racing, where they stick three barrels into the arena, and the kids have to ride their horses around all three barrels and break a light beam. And this was really impressive. The horsemanship and the skills that they had were excellent. With the sun setting, it was time for the adults to get out, and the first round with the adults is the Booking Broncos. They've obviously done this before, there were some pretty impressive things, and of course, you've got to remember that some of these riders here are professionals. Anyway, the girl with the Emu Export cam was loving it. Well, once they get off the horse, one way or another, the riders have to walk back and it's no coincidence they walk past the beer tent side of it and high five all the girls on the way. What did they say? What, what, did, what did the girl say? I'm not being rude, I just want a husband. <laughs> As she barged in, she she barged idea, in. She hanging her beer <laughs> and her half clad body over the railing. You might notice in this shot I'm actually the only bloke on the rail. It was all girls looking for cowboy husbands. After that, it's an episode of women's barrel racing. Again, it's just so impressive to watch them handling these horses, and racing around these barrels, the speed they get up to. And to wrap the evening off, it's their showcase event, the Pro Bull Riders. And I think this first one, he was about the only one that actually lasted until the buzzer and everybody else got thrown off. Yep, there's some skill, but there was also people doing this without helmets and protective gear on. They must be mad. And here's one of the cowboys wearing his safety outdoor hat. It doesn't last long. And I don't suppose he will, riding bulls without helmets. <laughs> Now the bars here didn't take cash, you had to buy tickets. And what happens when you drop your tickets over the rail? Yes, that's an emergency. And she was soon going to get them. Next up was the steer lassoing competition and this looks really difficult. Actually there was quite a few people had a go at this during the evening. 
and I don't think we ever saw anybody actually catch one of the steers. They're tricky little fellas. Again, it was very good horse riding though. I couldn't do the lasso or the horse, let alone the lasso on the horse. We will give a shout out for the rodeo clowns though. There was a few of those about and this was one particularly grumpy bull and he got his revenge. There we go. He sent the clown up into the sky. The crowd loved it. Do it again. Anyway, after that we were starving. Time for food and then to get out of here. Okay. That was it for our night at the Broom Rodeo. It was great fun, it was good to see the country sports and everybody getting together and you understand how this keeps these small towns going. Anyway, tomorrow something a bit more relaxing. <laughs> there is a traffic jam on the beach. It's like the M1. Like Melbourne city centre here. We thought we'd come down to Cable Beach and there's a couple of things. One is that in the background there you can see it looks like a motorway. And a lot of cars. Yes, but we are here. For this? Four wheel, four legged transport. Yes, four leg drive. Well, we loaded Margaret and Marilyn on a camel behind us. Myself and Katrina jumped on one of the ones in front. And this safari runs all the way up Cable Beach and back down supposed to be a sunset safari and we'll get the sunset a little later on. When we finish the sunset ride, we turn all the lights over the lights on the front of So these camels live in Broome and the handlers said that the camels know which way they're going and they always feed them when they get back on an evening so they're always pretty eager to get back. So we go up the beach for a couple of kilometres and then we chuck a yui as the Australians would say and then we head back down again and we watch the sunset because the sunset's pretty quick here. <laughs> That was a great fun experience. Time for us to get unloaded. They've got this funny ramp thing on the back of a ute that you climb off on. Once we're unloaded, we thought it was such a gorgeous evening. We'll get some drone footage along the beach there. And what a spectacular beach this is. It's just a shame that the water's full of crocodiles and stingrays. beside Broom and the race course there is Ganthone Point and we couldn't resist visiting some of the rock pools and getting some great drone footage. This area, the colour of the sea, the rocks, the dirt and the beach is just spectacular. Hope you enjoy this drone footage for a couple of minutes.
This was our favourite rock pool, and as the tide came in, remember it's a nine metre tide here, the rock pool would fill up. So me and Katrina spent a couple of days swimming in there, but as you can see, it's just great views. Anyway, enough of that, it was time to go ocean kayaking and look for dinosaur footprints. It was a perfect evening for it. Oh. <laughs> Paddle more! This was the first time myself and Katrina had been in a kayak together, so who knows what was going to happen. But we went out with this group, uh, one of the organised tours, and it goes out through Gonthane Point. And we find a nice beach on the other side of it to relax, have a look around, and a blowhole, and then we can turn around and come back. It was very enjoyable. through there let's go and have a look this is the bottom of the blowhole and the water comes rushing in through here and there's a cyclone and straight up through there how cool is that pretty good The rocks around here are absolutely packed with fossils. You don't have to look very hard to start finding them. How many packets so far? Three. Starving. Starving. Not many good Which bag's that? Shape. Is that number four or five? Oh, they're pizza shapes. Pizza shapes. Delicious. No, I buy it. After all that fossil hunting, dinosaur hunting, and eating shapes and crisps, it was time to head back to the beach and drop the kayak off. What a great place to stop, though. Very enjoyable.
Looking down in the water, we can see turtles and jellyfish. Just a reminder, you be careful when you're swimming here. But that was it. We got back just at sunset and we helped them load the kayaks up and that was done. Thoroughly recommended. What a great tour and a trip and a knowledgeable guide that we had there. Well, our next stop was a bit further up the coast at a place called Coconut Wells. And this is a tributary that runs in. And because of the tides in Broome being 30 feet, you get this tributary that actually runs inland when the tide comes in and out when the tide goes out. So after Katrina had had a good hunt around and found some shells, we could get on with the business of the day, which was to sit on a floaty and float all the way upriver. So if you walk, um, it's about uh, an hour's walk out to the sea, you can sit on your noodle or your board or whatever else and float your way inland. And the tide comes in here at about walking pace. And if you do that, you can float all the way into the bay that's on the inside of this. And it's a very relaxing way to spend a couple of hours. So that's the sea and there's an inlet just there and this is the river here but it's flowing upstream because the tide's coming in so fast so we're going to jump on the boogie boards and the floats like these people and we're going to float the two miles upstream back to the car pretty cool like a mermaid you can see from this video, Katrina's not paddling, and you can see how fast she's moving upstream with the tide that's going in. That's fair moving, that tide. Well, after all that floating up river, there was only one thing to do, and that was to park the camper beside the bayfront at the top of Coconut Wells and have ourselves a picnic, and very enjoyable it was too. Pretty handy having a four-wheel drive camper. That was it done for this. Next trip on the helicopter up to the Willy Creek Pearl Farm. So Broome is famous for its Cable Beach which is 22 kilometres long and runs north from Broome up the coast and the best way to see it is by helicopter. It really is so long and you can drive most of the way up this beach although the tide is so high it's notorious for tourists getting bogged and then the tide comes in and swallows up their car. We fly over Coconut Well which is that inlet or outlet depending which way the tide's going and when the tide changes quickly you can actually sit on a floaty or a rubber ring and you can float down through Coconut Well. But actually we're heading just north of there to Willy Creek Pearl Farm and this is the inlet at Willy Creek. The tides are so high here that the water is always kept very fresh and nourished which makes it ideal for growing pearls. So we thought we'll head in the helicopter up to Willy Creek and we'll have a look and see how that's done. <laughs> so pearling in this area has been done for a very long time and originally it was the Japanese pearlers that started doing it. But Willy Creek Pearl Farm has been running for about 30 years and they now run tours of their commercial operations and of course that's what we joined and they take us out on the boat and they take us around part of their pearl farms, show us the baskets uh, and just explain the general process of it. And we also do a bit of crock spotting. After that it's back to the pearl farm itself and we can see some of the pearls being harvested. Is it the, see the brown grass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just see it sat in the sun through that gap. Yeah, let's not all rush to my side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be cropped back today. Good time. <laughs> Good time. I'm still blind. I still can't oh, see it. Oh, yeah, I see it on the grass. Yeah. But now, it's going to snap all that sea like in. When it starts to go that back rock out, is nine metres high and it's fully exposed at low tide. Now it's totally underwater. That's the low tide jetty, <laughs> 30 feet underwater. 
After the boat tour of the farm in the inlet, we get taken into the outdoor hut and here they split an oyster and they invite an audience member, a young lad in this case, to go up and harvest the pearl and show us. Where's the imperfection? Oh, just there. There's also some over here. Oh, there is some more over there, yeah. And you got that out yourself. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good, isn't pretty it? Pretty good going. Yeah, if you see the, the and there's another mar two marbays here too. The marbays, the half. Yeah, ones. those two there are the marbays. <laughs> it's marbays over. If you want to look at the oyster in here as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you know, um, we it's good. Six hundred or one thousand seven hundred? Fifteen percent off. We can put them in like a and they and reuse that. I'm not that. Yeah. Yours for fifty-three thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars. That's the Dom Pearl, the biggest one we've ever found. That's one hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. I think they said. If you'd like to take it out. Well, the pearls might have been out of our budget, but a tasty lunch wasn't. So we went for that instead. Delicious. Yes, um... Well, with all that done, it was time to jump back in the helicopter. A quick flight over the Willy Creek Pearl Farm there, and you can see the water, how fast the tide's coming in at that point. And that's what keeps all the water clean and uh, full of nutrients for the pearls to grow. That's the entrance to Coconut Well and of course down Cable Beach, all 22 kilometres of it. And we took a slightly different route back because we went over the outside of Ganthoon Point here and we get a good aerial view of it, quite similar to the drone footage from earlier. But you can see how clear the sea is. And at the bottom of the picture there, there's dinosaur footprints in the rocks that you can go and walk down at low tide. That house at the end of those rocks is actually for sale, or it was when we were there if you're interested. That was almost the end of the helicopter trip. A quick flight over Broome, and that takes us back to the airport, and time to jump out. There was only one last thing to do while we were in Broome here, and that was to visit the coast on an evening, and it was a full moon evening, and that's the moon coming up, and we get to see what's called the staircase to the moon. And because of the water and the way the waves are, you can see several moons there in the reflections in the waves. Magnificent. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching the whole series. There's no more until our next adventure. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.